Hi everyone, this is Spencer Philip and welcome once again to my YouTube channel where I am giving you online free tutorials about mathematics, about journalism, about research and all the things that I love the most. For today, I will be giving you a discussion about an important topic in grade 11 mathematics and statistics and probability which is how to use the z-table to find the area and the z-scores. In this lesson, we should be able to first define and construct what is a normal curve, which is very important to our class, especially in statistics and probability. And secondly, to identify the area of a region under a normal curve using the formula that we have in Z-score. Now, let us recall that the normal probability distribution, this has a very unique um, feature because the graph of a normal probability distribution is a symmetrically bell-shaped curve wherein um, when you um, take the half of the curve you get a 50% uh, to the left and 50% to the right. Now let us try to find out what are the properties of the normal curve. First, the mean, the median, and the mode are equal. And the horizontal axis determines the highest value. If you would like to try to take a look at our figure there, uh, the, it resembles a half bell and the, the horizontal axis in the middle, that is the highest value. And that is the value of the mean, the median, and the mode. And that is equal. If the value of the mean, the median, and the mode are equal, that means our, our table or our our... It resembles a normal curve. Secondly, the curve is symmetric around the mean and extends indefinitely in both directions. So it ex extends going to the left and it extends going to the right. However, those values going to the to the right of our table, that those are the values that are positive above our mean value. And those values going to the to the left, those are the values that are negative or the values lower than our mean value. Well, of course, the total area or probability under the normal curve is equal to 100% or 1. Well, again, the values going to the right of our mean are the values which are positive, and the values going to the left are the values which are negative. Now, what is the standard score or commonly called the Z-score? The standard score or z-score is the equivalent value of a row score expressed in terms of the mean and the standard deviation of our distribution. It measures the distance of any particular score from the mean in standard deviation units. So try to look at the figure that we have there. Um, from the mean which is found at the center, we are adding the the mean plus the standard deviation going to the right, the 1, 2, and 3. And going to the left, we are subtracting. That means the values are negative of the standard deviation. That, that is something that we have to take note of. The values positive standard deviation and the negative standard deviation going to the left and going to the right of our table. Now, what is our Z table? Our Z table is a chart of numbers that we use to identify the area under our normal curve. So we use the area or we use the z-table to find the area of the z-score covering our um, normal distribution, whether the, the area covered is from the mean going to the z-score or from zero to z-score covering the entire distribution that we have. Now, in finding the area of a region, Given the row score x, the formula for its equivalent standard score or z-score is, is given on this figure. We have z-score equals x, which is our row score minus our, our mean, divided by our standard deviation. Again, z-score is equal to x minus our mean over our standard deviation. Try to take note of there are values which are positive, especially when your x or the row score is higher than your mean. When your row score, for example, is 90 and our 
mean is 85, of course, it will give you a positive answer. However, if the value is lower than your mean, then the answer will give you a negative value. Well, uh, in any case that be, you have to, whatever the answer is, you have to divide it by your standard deviation to get the value of your z-score. For example, we have here a word problem. I have prepared a one, one word problem for, for this a lecture. Example, the DJ company has 100 branches nationwide and the annual profit of the DJ company is normally distributed with a mean of 73 million a year and a standard deviation of 3.25 million. Now find the z-score pertaining to the number of branches having a sales of 80 million. Now for our given, based on the problem that we have, if we take note of... Uh, of the given that we have, we have, of course, the mean is 73 or 73 million. Our x representing the value that we need to look for is 80 based on the given and our standard deviation is equal to 3.25. For our solution, to find the equivalent score, we have z is equal to our x minus our mean over our standard Deviation. So when we are going to indicate the values there, we have 80 minus 73 over 3.25, which is the value of our standard deviation. Now, 80 minus 73 gives us 7 over 3.25 based on our illustration there as what you can see. So 7 divided by 3.25, it will give us 2.15. Now, 2.15 here is the value of our z-score based on the given that we have. Now, moving on, my dear students, my dear learners, using the z-table, we need to find the equivalent of 2.15 to get the area of the z-score from 0. First, we locate in the table the z-values of 2.1, the first two digits of the values that we have, and that value those values can, can be found at the leftmost area or the leftmost column in your Z table. If you have a Z table with you, then afterwards you move what is the, the, the we call that one in the, the hundreds value. On this case, the 2.1, the next value is 5. So we need to, to find the 0 0.05 going to the to the right of our Z table, we have it falls in 0.9842. That is the value of 2.15. What does that mean? We have 0.9842, which means the area of our Z score covers 98.42% of our normal distribution of the values that we have. However, if you want to know, in this case, the distance of the z-score from the mean, the mean falls at the center of our normal distribution, the standard distribution, and from there, 50%, it holds 50% of the data, the half of the area is equivalent to, again, 50%. So to get how far is the z-score from the mean, we need to subtract 98.42% by 50%. So we have 98.42 subtracted by 50, then we get 48.42%. That is how far it is our mean. Now, please try to take note that we have the values for both the positive and the negative z-score. So don't be confused because when we get the area, it will always be Positive. If we have the table of the positive Z values and the negative Z values, if you have to look at any of it in our Z table, it will give you a positive area or a positive equivalent. So that we have no problem if you subtract it by 50%. Now, to sum up in this problem, we have obtained the following values. In this case, based on the DJ company problem that we have, the 2.15 is our z-score. Then, 98.42%, that is the z-area distribution in the entire values or the entire table that we have. Uh, represented by that, that figure that we, that we have. From 0 to 2.15, z-score, it will give us 98.42%. What is the implication of that? 
That means 98.42% of the data falls on that area. Then lastly, 48.42 after subtracting 50%, we got the Z area from the mean of our values. So that is 48.42%. That is how far the, the score or the, the value that we have earlier based on the problem is from our mean. So if we try to look back again to our problem from the DJ company problem, that means uh, the value of let's say our the 80 is that is 2.15 um, Z score away from our mean or that is equal to 98.42%. Those are the data which lie in our given value. So if you have uh, questions or clarifications, you can drop by or you can comment down in this YouTube channel or if you have suggestions where, which I may want, you may want to include in our next um, video presentation, you can just ask and request me to do so. Once again, this is Arpeo and thank you for watching.